please Bob Ross up in heaven, please make this tutti frutti. And set a book on fire. What is this? It's not tutti frutti. <laughs> You ever sat down to film a video and then just chaos ensues? I've been sitting here for 15 minutes trying to film this video, looking all cute, and then, and then I had to sneeze. Hello, bookish family, and welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name's Steph. I am so, 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 so nervous and excited um, and thankful to you guys for not just 500 when I first started planning this video, but now over 600 subscribers. And I'm here to do, for your enjoyment, Bookish Never Have I Ever, featuring random misflavored jelly beans. Ugh. <laughs> Earlier in the month, I put out on Twitter a request for prompts for Bookish Never Have I Ever, and this has been inspired by the video I saw on Sam's channel over at Thoughts on Tomes. Um, I'm pretty sure that Sam got it from someone else, so I'll be linking Sam's video and any other videos I find as far as original creators in the description below. Um, I did not come up with this. Definitely saw this floating around booktube for a while and I thought it would be fun to do. Usually you're supposed to drink when playing this game, so never have I ever, for those of you who've never played it before, is basically you get a prompt and if you've not done that thing, then you just give your answer. And if you have done that thing, you give your answer, but you're supposed to drink or do something along with that. So I'm going to be using these mixed jelly beans that are from a game it's called bean boozled but basically these flavors of jelly beans are highly questionable so i'm going to shake around the box and kind of pour one out without looking and just pop it in my mouth and see what we get if i answer yes to any of these questions there are multiple flavors in this box so i'll just explain to you what i might be tasting today so I might get chocolate pudding, or I might get dog food, I might get peaches, or I might get barf. Who knows? It's a risk. Let's play. <laughs> I'm going to be reading the prompts off of my phone and giving you my bookish answers. Oh my god. Why am I doing this again? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done this so close to breakfast. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. <gasps> Whew, okay. Here we go. All right, Lois. Hey, Lois. Lois from Low Chan Reads is asking, have you ever started daydreaming in the middle of a sentence? <sighs> Absolutely. Um, boy, I poured too many. I'm not looking. Oh, I just need one. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Oh. Try that again. What is this? I don't know what it is. I'm not looking, but yes, I have daydreamed in the middle of a sentence. Usually if I get bored while reading a book, my mind will wander onto something else. And that tells me that it's probably time to take a break from reading it. So, whew. I'm scared. What is it? What is it? I'm scared. Oh. Oh. What is this? Oh, what is this? Oh. I'm pretty sure that was a booger. Oh. oh. Moving on to the next question. Ari. Hey, Ari from Bookish Valhalla. Wants to know. Never have I ever slept with a book. And never have I ever read in the bathroom. Left with a book? Yes. Read in the bathroom? No. But technically, since the answer is yes. So I bring my books to bed with me because I don't have a nightstand. Um, so I just bring books to, I stack a books to me to bed and whichever one I feel like reading at the time, because I'm always reading more than one book at a time. I'll just pick up the one I feel like reading and go from there. I'm scared. Oh. 
that's toothpaste. Oh, I mean, I guess, I guess toothpaste is not such a bad one. It wasn't as bad as the bar. Armand, hey Armand. <laughs> Armand's one of my best brothers. Armand wants to know, threw a book in the trash and set a book on fire. God damn it, Armand, you already know the answer to that question. Yes, I've done both of those things. <laughs> yes, I've set a book on fire. Couple reasons. One, I didn't want it. I was at a bonfire, threw it in, whatever. Paper makes good kindling. Um, but also for artistic reasons, since I'm an artist, I've done things in which I've burned pages for aesthetic purposes or for a sculpture project. So taking old books that were donated or secondhand um, and ripped them up and burned them and sculpted with them. So definitely yes to that. Throwing a book in the trash. Yeah, I mean, if it was damaged, like if it got extreme water damage or something really happened, it was just wasn't readable anymore. Um, but throwing a book in the trash for anger reasons. <sighs> Have I done that? Yes, I did. You know what I did that with? The last Twilight book. I was really pissed off that, you know, I gotta say, when I was a teenager, I did go through a Twilight phase and... I got to the last book, got 600 pages in or however, whatever ridiculous length it was just to be really pissed off at the ending. I felt like the ending was so stupid. So yeah, I threw that in the trash. <sighs> ah! Oh my God. What is that? Ah, uh, 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 what is that? Rotten eggs. Why can't I get any of the good ones? I want buttered popcorn. <sighs> Let me shake this up a little bit more. Okay. Oh, Kay at over at Kay's library wants to know. How did 24 hour readathon finish three books in one day and hated a popular series? You know, I tried to do a 24 hour readathon before and I super failed at it. So I don't know if that counts as like having one if I didn't even make it halfway. Um, finish three books in a day. Yes, mostly manga. I can sit there and read manga for hours. And then also hated a popular series. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, recently read the first book in the, uh, what's it called? True Blood series. That book was so racist. I don't know how anybody sat there and said, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's turn it into a TV show and just take, all, take out all the racist bits and just pretend that they never happened. Like it was literally the foundation of the book. It was like really dumb. And uh, to me, Stephanie Myers is overrated. So, that being said, God shave me. Oh, that is so nasty. There's a special place in hell for the people who invented these jelly beans. Oh my God. That was definitely barf. Moving on, before I decide to cancel this video. Ansu, hi Ansu, wants to know, have you ever dropped water on your books, stayed up all night reading, and finished reading a book the day it was released? Oh, yes to all three of these. I am very guilty of getting arcs and finishing them on their release day, like waiting until the last minute to read them. Um, what was the other question? Yes, I've gotten water damage on my books like a dummy walking out in the rain with books or just spilling water a couple water on it and stayed up all night reading i feel like when you really love a book you can usually just not put it down or just i mean i'm definitely guilty of staying up till two in the morning because i was just so immersed into the world 110 percent yes Oh, it's not 
a nasty one. Oh, <laughs> is it pears? Oh, it might have been berry blue. Yes, oh, success. Oh my God, my stress level was getting so high. Okay, <sighs> okay. Nana from Lit Nana, hey Nana. Nana wants to know, never have I ever read the same book twice not realizing I read it before. Have I done that? I don't think I have. Have I? I'm pretty sure I've done that with movies. Like sat down, started watching a movie, and then was like, hey, I did watch this before. I just sucked or I didn't like it, so I don't remember anything about it. Um, but as far as books... No, I'm pretty sure I haven't done that. That's a really good question though. Sarah from Sarah's Coffee Cup says, hey Sarah, Sarah says, never have I ever walked while reading. Oh, absolutely have I done that. Um, I like to pace around when I'm doing my homework, kind of like stretch my legs because I sit at a desk all day. So I've definitely done that. Um, I've definitely just walked around my house. Um, guilty of walking down the street. I remember as a kid like being really immersed in a book and so I would kind of follow my mom around Target or around wherever she was shopping with a book and just kind of like use my peripheral vision to make sure that I was still following her but still be immersed in what I was doing. Whew. What is this? What is this? Oh. Is that a peach? That might have been a strawberry banana smoothie. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That was good. That was good. Mm-hmm. My other option would have been dead fish, and I'm okay with this. Rachel from Let Me In The Library. Hey, Rachel. Says, this, and she's pointing to Sarah said, so never have I ever walked while reading, but walked into something because I was too distracted reading. Have I done that? I'm gonna go with no, no, yes, no, yes. Definitely have. Um, I am very guilty of destroying my poor little toesies. Um, I'm constantly bumping into things because I don't pay attention and I can definitely think of quite a few times that I've done that. Um, because I was just like this with a book. I'm very sorry toes. I should take care of better care of you. I guess I'll be taking them to a pedicure pretty soon to say I'm sorry. Ow, that was hard. Oh my god, that was dog food. It tastes like iron. Ew. Oh. Next question. Ugh. Next question so I can hurry up and get this over with. Ari, hey Ari, said, never have I ever shouted at a book in public. Absolutely, freaking lootly I've done that. <gasps> that dog food was nasty. Um, absolutely. I used to ride the train into New York City when I worked in New York City and I was always reading a book and I was always screaming. Um, <laughs> um, also, just being in the studio, I remember when I used to work in, in a group studio and all the other artists were there, we would always just have our headphones on working and stuff and you know, everyone's painting, doing their own thing, their own jam and I would have an audio book plugged in and be in the middle of painting and go, <gasps> No way! <laughs> and everyone else would think I made a mistake on my work, but it was just the audiobook I was listening to. So, definitely 110% guilty of that. Um, also guilty of doing that in the sense of sitting next to my husband, he's chilling out doing his thing, I'm in another chair reading a book or something, and then scaring the crap out of him because I go, <gasps> No way! <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure this was another barf. Oh. 
I don't know what's worse, the bar for the dog food. Ugh. I'm also gonna steal a handful of prompts from Sam's video and again, her video will be linked down below. But question is, never have I ever given a book to a friend and regretted it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely done this. Um, this is why I'm missing a lot of first volumes in series that I've collected. Like I have my original Sailor Moon series and I'm missing volume one. I'm missing volume one of Gunslinger. I'm missing quite a few of my favorite Stephen King books. Um, volume one of Dean Angel. Volume one of so many uh, good series that I started to collect and I let friends borrow and I never get them back, which is why I don't let people borrow anything anymore unless it's someone who I know that I see very regularly. Like, hey, I go to your house all the time. I'm gonna go and pick up my book. Um, oh God, I can't take this. What could this be? This could be Tutti Frutti or Stinky Socks. Please, Bob Ross up in heaven, please make this Tutti Frutti. It's not tootie fruity. <laughs> also, oh, I think I'm gonna make this the last question because I'm literally this close to barfing. Never have I ever, <laughs> never have I ever bought a book because of the cover and had no intentions of reading it. Technically, no, because I, Yes, I make cover purchases all the time. I'm a sucker for a beautiful book. Aesthetics are highly important to me. Um, will I not read a book because of the cover and its aesthetics? No, I'll still read it. However, I will be more excited going into it and be in a better mood if the cover is aesthetically pleasing. But I have not bought a book based solely on the cover and not even read the synopsis and not been interested in the synopsis. That just doesn't make sense to me, I guess. Um, because you can have something so beautiful on the outside and on the inside be just completely outside of your comfort zone. So it has to at least be a genre or story that sounds intriguing to me. Otherwise, I'm not picking it up. The cover could be as beautiful as you know, anything else. Um, but if the synopsis isn't there, that's what's most important. So no, oh, thank God. Okay. Thank you um, so much for the subscribers. And this is also the video in which I'm going to announce the winner for the giveaway. So roll the clip of the name of wheels. Congratulations to the winner. Thank you guys so much for over 600 subscribers. What I'm going to be giving away to the winner is I'm going to be DMing them for their favorite book title. I'm going to read their favorite book. I'm gonna to try to add it to my March TBR if I can. And then I'm going to send them some custom made merch based off of that book. So that'll be a bookmark, a bookish accessory, and also some jewelry or keychain or something of the sort along with some fan art. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up until this point. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I'm gonna go wash my mouth out with soap. Bye!